Hi everybody, uh, just a view here of uh, three really amazing Hondas. So we've got the XR250R 1985 and the XL250 degree, I think about 89 or 90, can't be sure it's all in Japanese. <laughs> I must check out on the engine number and frame number sometime. And then we've got the 93 XR250R. So we'll do a few comparisons of these bikes. Well for starters each one of them are 250cc engines. Single cylinder four strokes. The XL250 degree is liquid cooled. Twin ABA cam engine. Look how you see up in there, a little bit of shadow. Not too different in some ways to the DRZ250. Uh, still has a mono shock pro link design. Very robust bike. Similar to the version of the AX1 Honda. There's some differences in the front uh, with the uh, headlight arrangement. Some have a double headlight. These are fairly much a uh, an Asia European bike. This is a Japanese assembled this one and uh, very lucky to have ownership of it. I haven't seen many at all in New Zealand. The only thing I've really had a bit of trouble with is the uh, original header pipe uh, was missing when I bought the bike. So that header pipe there is off a, uh, a KLX Kawasaki 250 fits there perfectly actually so probably won't do much about that at this stage. I was thinking a little, little bit about the stance on the uh, 85 XR250R. The stand, the side stand is slightly shorter I think and it leans over Leans over. The uh, XL250 also leans quite a bit compared to the 93. Well, I'm saying that they're probably <laughs> all in a fairly similar angle to be honest. Haven't measured the forks, but just looking here at the 93, the length of the forks maybe a little longer when you compare the length of the gator uh, on the 93 compared to the 85. There's a little bit of uh, work to be done, you know, I'll put new fork seals in etc. You can see it's a little bit dirty around the bottom here. Nothing of any concern at this stage. So we'll look at some of the differences in these bikes as well. The 93 is not a bad bike. Um, I've had it sitting under my cover for a little bit, so there's a little bit of surface rust there that's just come, but it'll just wipe off with a bit of an oily rag, no problem there. You get the problem with the, uh, the, the disc and the spokes can get a little bit of surface rust on them. It's just one of those things, I don't have a lot of storage space. So I, I like this model here, um, you know we have the 
oil cooled engine still the last uh, getting close to the end with the uh, oil in the sump design I guess the only real thing I've done to it I, I did sort of dress it up a little bit with some of these aluminium there for the uh, brake hose and some of these little aluminium adjusters. I tried to get uh, just ordinary alloy but I uh, could only really find the red anodized. They don't look too bad though. I have got the cover for the headers. I must put that on sometime. So the work that I need to do on this bike is I need to buff the the fuel tank. It's a bit grubby. It's had uh, transfers. Uh, would have had the big uh, purpley sort of coloured or XR on it. I may get some new transfers for it and stick those on. That'll dress it up nicely. Oh, that's right. I did put a, a new tail light on it. So this one here, uh, the headlight and tail light operate. On the uh, on the degree, uh, everything works on this bike. Um, she has the uh, twelve volt system, electric start. I'll just give it a flip. Electric start, which is nice. No kickstart on this model, by the way. Uh, got blinkers, uh, high low beam, uh, side stand alarm, all that sort of stuff. Disc brake on the front, same style as on the XRs. By the way, it's a 21 inch front and a 18 inch rear on this one. Uh, with a six-speed transmission. The engine is quite a different design from the XR. We've got the, I don't know if the, the clutch may be the same size plates, I haven't looked into that. But uh, the actuator is sort of off to the side at the top compared to the XR93 which is off to the back and the 85 which is more in the central at the top. I have got the original carburetor for it. A trouble with it, so I've gone and put a um, a new one on there. Uh, liquid cooled, as I was saying. I believe this is like a forerunner to the CRF uh, 250L engine. It pulls very strong with the twin AV cam. I think it's got uh, it's 30 odd horsepower anyway, and. Uh, it's a great bike to ride, it's got plenty of plenty of pull on it. And this is the one which I do intend to road register at some stage. So I put DOT tyres on it, so they're not seriously aggressive, they're more of an, of an adventure tyre on the front and the rear. It has a drum brake rear of course. It has a steel swing arm. The original sw swing arm was in very poor condition when I bought the bike. So this is a, um, a new one, it's almost new old stock, I got it from Spain believe it or not, uh, cost quite a lot, these are quite hard to get hold of, in this condition it's just amazing. It's got a fairly low seat, uh, seat, uh, seat arrangement on it so it's really comfortable to ride. But it does have good travel on the front and rear suspension, so it would do reasonably well on the trail. If 
They all look really amazing in the morning sun, that's for sure. But like all bikes, they're old, and there's always something you can do to improve them. But I'm reluctant to do too much because, you know, there was never the intention for these to be uh, concourse display models. These are bikes to be ridden and enjoyed, and so they will have wear and tear on them. And that's to be expected for bikes that are, you know, 40 and 30 odd years old, you know, if you even compare it to a human being. At that age, we're starting to uh, have a few uh, knocks. So I guess this is my collection of Hondas. So lucky enough also to have the uh, two DRZ 250s. One of them that I will be selling on sometime. Not that I really want to, but it just doesn't seem to really be any sense in having two exactly the same. So by selling one of them, the older one, and it allows me to sort of free up space for one more bike. So I'm quite happy to take comments on uh, these models if there's anything that you'd like to ask about what I have found out about them. Even now after all these years of ownerships of Hondas, I still learn little things, or well, you forget things and you relearn them over time. Uh, especially when you start taking the engines apart. They're pretty straightforward engines to work on. Although on the degree, all I've done on this bike is just uh, the exhaust header and the carb, and uh, that's all I've done. I have changed the coolant, it's got um, new coolant in it, and uh, the engine oil and filter, of course, all that's been done. It's done very, very little use since I've had it. I think I've had this for about six years, and I've only used it for uh, less than one hour of running time in that time. <laughs> so it really hasn't had any use at all. Uh, still has the original foot pegs, uh, gear lever. It's got patina, of course on a tank etc. Up here around the fascia for the headlight. And uh, yeah, original brake pedal and original foot peg on this side as well. So it's a pretty original bike um, that is fairly hard to find out in, uh, in New Zealand and Australia, that's for sure. It did come with gaiters, but they were in really poor condition. It'd look really nice, I think, if I put some nice new uh, blue gaiters on it, which I may do sometime. I have got the original indicators for the rear, but I came across these little ones here, and I quite like them. They're nice and compact, so I put those on. I didn't want to damage the original ones if I do take it off-road. I get all these ideas about taking it somewhere. <laughs> I must do it. This summer I think I will do a bit more out and about and, and get this one um, out somewhere and have a bit of fun with it. I do like the XR. It's a fairly original bike, except that, um, well I'm saying that, it has been um, uh, disassembled and the frame has been painted black you can tell that the sort of as I've had the seat off it and the tank off it you can tell that it's all been painted again um, doesn't look too bad in black but uh, that's how it is and I think they resprayed the uh, the plastic uh, black inserts as well on this one Muffler is quite different on the XL 250 degree. It's a very quiet bike. Uh, I've got some previous videos of me riding it and having the engine ticking away. It's quite a quiet bike. Uh, the baffle is in on the XR, which makes it a little bit more quieter as well. I 
Unfortunately, the ProLink sticker on this side is worn away. But the ProLink on this side is pretty much still there. I did put a new pet cot on here and a new fuel hose uh, because it started leaking on me. <laughs> Usual story, get the bike home and put a bit of fuel in it and find these things out. But it's no problem, I'm quite happy to do these little uh, jobs on it. I'm not going to really do any uh, restoration on this bike though, I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. I just like the fact that it's almost like a survivor of 40 years if you like. So the information tag here is actually riveted to the frame. I thought it was just a sticker at one stage, but now it's riveted to the frame here. Uh, December of 1985 was the build on it. Didn't get a key unfortunately for it, but I guess Honda may be able to supply me one if I uh, dug into it. Not that I really need it. But, uh, So yes, yeah, comparisons, they, they each have their particular, you know, angle to them, but they, you can tell they're all Hondas at a glance quite quickly. I think you can anyway, they got that Honda look to them. And I like them each really a lot. So it looks like the, the headlight frames are very similar aren't they on all of them over the years. Even when you look at say from 85 through to 93 it looks like the same moulding pretty much. Very little difference. Oh I did put a new headlamp, a new lens and everything into here. The other one was plastic. These are actually plastic on these bikes and uh, that one is plastic as well, I'm pretty sure. That, yeah, I think that, that one's plastic. This one is glass, and uh, the plastic uh, on this original one has got a, a bit of a crack in it. And I thought, well, if I'm going to get this bike road registered, there will be things which I get knocked back on. And I will be putting a new disc on it. I'll put a fresh disc on this one, so it's nice and fresh. There's a little lip on, on this one here when you move your finger across it to the outside edge. You can feel some wear on the disc. This one here, I can't feel anywhere at all. And I believe this is the original disc on the bike. Although we did put new pads on it. You can see the new pads down in here. Trying to think what else I didn't sort of show on this one last time. Yeah, so I, I, I've had the seat in a tank off. Uh, the seat on this model here is a little bit different. It doesn't have the bolts just here on the sides. They're up underneath here. There's two 10mm nuts up in here. Just uh, these two just nuts just up there before that bit of white plastic of the seat uh, moulding. They come off and the seat just slides backwards. There's a little bit of heat damage just here, which is quite typical from the heat of the muffler. But I'll just leave that as it is, because that's just part of its journey. The rear mono shock is in excellent condition. Looks quite nice with the blue. Even having the little plastic guard here. You know, things which would have gone missing at some stage are still with this bike, which is really quite incredible having the original hardware with it over all this time. I haven't actually given it a clean up yet since I've had it. So I'm sure um, if I went over here with a, a nice uh, brush and uh, soapy water, the gaiters would come up quite nice also. So I could talk all day about these bikes and uh, have this video running for ages, but I think it, it's probably enough for now. Um, 
gives you a comparison of the bikes. I'm very pleased to be having the ownership of them, that's for sure. And uh, under my ownership, they're definitely well looked after. Try to do my best to look after them because, uh, you know, in the, each in their own way, is some history of these models. And uh, sometime, I guess, someone else will um, have that ownership and hopefully get the same pleasure that I'm getting from them. There's probably a little bit of wind noise, so the wind has just started to get up a little bit. As I said on an earlier video, I will put a uh, decompression cable on here. It's got good compression, but uh, I just think it'll just uh, finish that off and make it complete. Actually, in the box of stuff, uh, I do have the original decompression cable, but it's a, a little bit damaged by the looks of it at one end so I think it's easy to buy a fresh one for it. They're only about fifteen twenty dollars. So there you go everybody. Uh, those of you that are Honda enthusiasts uh, gives you something to compare these different models and uh, I'm sure, especially if uh, people in maybe uh, Japan or some parts of Southeast Asia, up into Europe, uh, probably the UK, I don't think so much in America, uh, you'll come across um, examples of this bike, uh, even as an AX1. It is actually a great bike, I'm really pleased to have it. I actually got it as a, as a bike in a box, believe it or not. Uh, so, it, um, but I was very fortunate to get ownership of this bike. And if you look back on uh, the video where I picked up this bike, uh, around about six years ago with the Santa Fe, <laughs> it was an exciting trip because I nearly ran out of petrol. stopping by to uh, look at my small channel and uh, I hope whatever you're doing is going well for you and uh, I think I'll finish this off now I'll see you a little later in another video hopefully you're one riding these bikes thank you for viewing